Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic time series. In this video, we learn about a new forecast accuracy measure called the mean absolute scaled error or maze for short. And as always, like, comment and subscribe. Let's get started. Now these first few slides I will go through very quickly because they are the same as all the videos in this playlist. And of course, please check out the entire playlist for all videos about forecast accuracy measures. The data set we are using is Nigeria's GDP per capita from 2000 up through the year 2020. We can see a graph of it here. It goes up quite a bit, has an inflection point around 2014 and then flattens out a bit, if not decreases a bit. And ultimately we are interested in making a forecast for the next year, which is 2021. So we're learning about different forecast accuracy measures as it relates to the naive forecast. Remember the naive forecast is just the entire time series shifted forward in time by one time period. So in this case, we just take the actual value from the previous year and that becomes the forecast for the next year. Everything just slides forward one time period. You can see how this works. Then we calculate the forecast error, which is over here in the right hand column. That is just the actual minus the forecast. So in this case in 2001, for example, the forecast error is 1499 minus 1451 for a forecast error of 48, which is positive, of course. At the bottom, we have negative forecast errors because the forecast value is larger. So for example, in 2017, we have 2530 minus 2576, which is of course larger, and therefore the forecast error is negative. Always examine your forecast errors. So here is a graph of the forecast errors from that previous slide. We can see that the first two thirds are positive and then the last third or so are negative. So in this first part, the actual values are above the forecast values because the naive forecast cannot keep up with changes in the slope of the graph. And then the opposite is true over here on the right. The actual values are below the forecast values because the naive forecast cannot keep up with the descending part of the graph. Always know your errors. The forecast errors create a new derivative time series that can be a treasure trove of information for the analyst, which is of course you. By looking at just the naive forecast errors, you should be able to reverse engineer how the underlying time series looks. So if you just had that chart or the graph from the previous slide in your mind, you should be able to think backwards about how the original time series might look. In fact, many forecasting techniques do this very thing under the hood. The patterns and the naive forecast errors can reveal trend, seasonality, inflection points in the graph, and so on. And examining naive forecast errors can help in the selection and interpretation of more advanced forecasting techniques. And actually in maze and this forecast accuracy measure, the naive forecast itself takes a central role. So here's a graph of the actual GDP per capita in the green line. Here's the forecast value in the pink line. And we can see that there's a gap between the two during certain time periods. So a series of positive naive forecast errors or under forecasts indicates an upward trend in the series because the naive forecast cannot keep up with the upward trend in the original time series there in green. It's always behind. Of course, the opposite is true. A series of negative naive forecast errors or under forecast indicates a downward trend in the series. Again, because the naive forecast cannot keep up with the descent of the original time series. Now onto the main concept of this video, which is maze or mean absolute scaled error. And we have to do a bit of setup here because it is a bit different than the other forecast accuracy measures we learned about in this playlist. MAE or mean absolute error, the root mean square error or RMSC, and even MAPE, M-A-P-E, is a bit different conceptually than maze. So let's do a quick overview. What maze is asking is this. How does forecast method X or whatever compare to the naive forecast method? That's the foundational question of maze. So maze, scales other forecasting methods against the naive forecast. So maze uses the naive forecast as a benchmark. The maze for the naive forecast itself equals one because it is being scaled against itself. So when conducting a naive forecast, the maze will always be one 
assuming you've done it correctly. So therefore, maze equals one should be the case in this video, because in this case, we've been using a naive forecast. Now, when we get to other forecasting techniques, it will obviously change, but since we're using the naive forecast itself, the maze should be one. If the maze is greater than one for forecast method whatever, X, then method X has larger forecast errors than the naive forecast, and it performs worse. So again, one is that inflection point. If it's greater than one, the naive forecast is actually better. If the maze is less than one for forecast method X, then method X has smaller forecast errors than the naive forecast and it performs better. If maze is less than one, then the naive forecast is worse. That's how it works. What are some benefits of maze? And it does have many benefits over some of the other methods we have learned up to this point. First, it is scale or unit independent, kind of like MAPE, which I'll compare it to here in a second. So remember that MAE or the mean absolute error and the root mean square error, the RMSC, are both in the original units of the time series, which in this case is US dollars. Whereas MAPE is scale or unit independent in the fact that it uses a percentage, MAZE is scale or unit independent in the fact that it's more of sort of a ratio. We're comparing the errors of whatever forecast method we are using to the naive forecast. So as you will see, the naive forecast is actually the denominator in maze. It's also predictable around zero, which other forecast methods are not. It's also good for sporadic time series where zero is a frequent measure or count. So if you're measuring something across time, but the count of something is zero for many time periods, maze is good for that. It has an equal opportunity penalty for both positive and negative errors and large and small errors. So other forecast accuracy measures are biased in both regards. Some favor positive or negative and some favor large or small errors. Now for this video, I do not want to get into all of that because you're just here trying to learn about what it is, but in a future video, I might explain why that is. But just keep in mind that maze is good and that it reduces bias with respect to positive and negative errors and large and small errors. On that note of things I don't want to go too far into, it does have normality of difference between forecasts. And maybe we can get into that more later, but just remember this is a good thing. And finally, and maybe most importantly, it is easy to interpret. So a value greater than one means that forecast method X is worse than the naive forecast method. And a value less than one means it's better than the naive forecast method. And if it's at or right around one, it means it's about the same or exactly the same as the naive forecast method. So it's really easy to interpret when you see it in the output of whatever software you are using, or if you're calculating it by hand, which I hope you're not doing. Mean absolute scaled error or maze. Let's look at the mathematics behind it. Now this formula looks a lot worse than it actually is like many formulas in time series once you get the pattern down. So here is maze. One, make forecasts for each period. Two, find the forecast error for each period. Same thing we've been doing in all these videos up to this point. Now here's where things get a bit different. Step four, obtain the naive forecast mean absolute error for the entire time series. This becomes our denominator. So the naive forecast mean absolute error, which in this case we've already done for the entire time series is the denominator. It is sort of the standard by which we are measuring other values. Five, divide each forecast error by the naive mean absolute error. This is the scaling in mean absolute scaled error. Sum the scaled errors, divide by the number of forecast errors, in this case n, or multiply by the reciprocal, one over n, get you the same thing. So that's how this works. We're taking the absolute forecast error for a time period, for a period, dividing that by the naive forecast mean absolute error for the entire time series. We do that across the entire time series, then we find the mean, that's it. And of course, a note. So maze makes comparisons of forecasting methods easier and more useful because it standardizes the errors using the naive forecast MAE as a baseline. So the time series original units no longer matter. And keep in mind though, the real implications of the error may or may not be meaningful. 
Now, another node that's important here that makes maze very powerful is that if you look at the denominator in this formula, which is the naive forecast mean absolute error for the entire time series, the chances of that being zero are almost zero. So again, it's the mean absolute error for the entire time series based on the naive forecast. The only case where that denominator would be zero is where we are doing a naive forecast on a horizontal line that's perfectly horizontal. And if that is the case, then we're doing a forecast that's meaningless anyway. So there are two steps for maze. The first thing we need is the denominator itself, which is the MAE of the naive forecast, which we've actually already done in this playlist. So when we did that, we found the mean absolute error for this data was $76.55. So that is our denominator going forward. Again, very basic and we've already done it. So here's where we're at so far. We know we have 20 observations. So that's what the one over 20 over on the left, that's where that comes from. And then we have the denominator, which is the mean absolute error of the entire time series. That is $76.55. What we don't have is the absolute forecast error for individual time periods. The thing to keep in mind here is that everything else here stays the same. So obviously one over 20 stays the same. That's where we're taking the mean. The $76.55 stays the same for each iteration through time periods. The only thing that changes is the absolute forecast error for an individual time period. That is our changing variable as we go across the time series. MAE is the scale factor. It's fixed for each calculation. Number of observations, that's fixed. So we have 20 observations. And this changes for each time period, the absolute forecast error for any given period. So we do that basic math and we have a table that looks like this. We can see we have obviously our year, the GDP number, the naive forecast value, our forecast error. We have our absolute error there in the yellow column. Then what we do is we take the absolute error, so A, B, S, E, the absolute error, and divide that by the MAE of the naive forecast method, which in this case is $76.55. So in the case of 2001, we take 48 divided by 76.55. For 2002, we take 187 divided by 76.55. 2003, 78 divided by 76.55, and so on and so forth. So that is the fraction we had in the previous slide. So here is our formula. Make forecast for each period. Find the forecast error for each period. Take the absolute value for each forecast error. Step four, we obtain the naive forecast, MAE, which we've already done for the entire time series. So this is the denominator. So that's $76.55. I think that was actually the first video in this playlist where we did that. Then we divide each forecast error by that MAE. This is the scaling in mean absolute scaled error. Sum the scaled errors and divide by the number of forecast errors in this case, which is 20, or multiply by the reciprocal, one over 20, same thing. When we do that, we get a maze of one. Well, why is it one exactly? Well, remember, in this case, maze equals one because our forecasting method was the naive forecast method itself. This is sort of a built-in check. If we did everything right for the naive forecast, the maze should be one, because we're dividing it essentially by itself. It's also a built-in proof for maze. Now, when we use another forecasting method, like a moving average or something like that, then it will most likely not be exactly one. But in this case, because our forecast method was the naive method itself, therefore the maze equals one. So here is our Nigeria GDP per capita forecast accuracy matrix. We can see that because we use the naive forecast, the maze is one and it should be. So to recap, in general, the goal is to minimize the forecast error for the known time series, then use that forecast method or methods to make forecasts for future unknown values. Not all forecasting and evaluation methods are appropriate or possible for data with certain characteristics. For example, data or errors that have negative and or values of zero. And maze is a good measure because it avoids a lot of that. Evaluation methods are sometimes in different units. So it could be the original units like MAE and RMSE up above. It could be scaled like we have in maze or percentages like we have in MAPE. Therefore, comparisons of forecast error occur within a method 
or between methods that use the same unit or scale. So a quick example is the maze here. So obviously the maze for naive forecast will be one, but when we go down the maze column, we might have some that are a bit above one, some that are a bit below one. And in this case, the ones that are below a value of one are better than the naive forecast. Now you might have other ones that are also below one. So in this case, the lowest value would be the best. In MAPE, the lowest percentage would be the best. So our comparisons in this matrix are by column. We're looking for the lowest value in the case of these four measures in that column when compared across five different forecast methods eventually. Now it is common for forecast methods to disagree about which is the best method for forecasting. So if we go on the maze column here, forecast method D might be like, I don't know, 0.5, which is a good value. But in MAPE, forecast method B might have the lowest percentage. So they don't always agree. And it's up to us as analysts to determine which one or which ones to use for our future forecasts. So that wraps up this video on forecast accuracy, the mean absolute scaled error or maze for short. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.